Today we're going to see um, how do we actually produce the state space matrices given this example. As you can see, we have the physical example on the screen, but we don't have the bond graph model or the differential equations. So the question here is, from scratch, can we get the state space matrices and the state space form? the matrices A, B, C, D, and um, in this particular case they're asking us to, uh, the outputs are the velocity or the mass M3 or the force on the spring case of 2. So here we have two outputs in here. So let's see how we're going to do this. Um, first of all, Let's write, uh, let's make sure that we get our good bone graph, uh, good bone graph model done. And so for this purpose, we are going to um, use and, and uh, I would say using the same uh, uh, graphing here, I'm going to use and and, and draw it over the picture so that you can see what we're doing. I'm going to draw one junction for each distinct velocity. So this is the velocity of the mass M2, which this would be x2 dot. You have the velocity of the of this mass here. And that is going to be, uh, let's say, 1 in here. This would be x sub 3 dot. And now we have in here a 1, which is would be x sub 1 dot. And I am going to put a 1 junction for the velocity of the wall equals to zero, yeah? So the first thing we're doing, we're following the procedure of building the bone graph models, put the distinct velocity for each one of the, the velocities of the masses in there, the individual, um, of course in this case we also use a one junction for the reference point. <laughs> so, step number two requires for us to attach the, um, the elements that, that um, see this velocity. So in here we have this, uh, of course, the, the force applied. This would be this f of t, some force in here. We have the um, mass m sub 2. This other one over here, we are going to say this is i element with value m sub 3. And then you have over here another mass with value m sub 1. Yeah? So those are the elements that see these velocities. You see there, um, this spring sees velocities between this and this. So, and so are this in here, yeah? So I am going to put a zero junction here and connect this. And the difference between the x1 dot minus the velocity of the wall, this is this one. And in here you can see that the spring on the damper see the, the relative velocity, so this is 
the spring is this C element and the damper is this R element with value FB2. And this other value of this for the C element is K sub 2. Okay. In between these two, see we continue this. Between these two, we have this uh, element in here. So we're going to put another zero here. And we'll adjust from here to here. We don't have any. This is the difference, and we could we could actually say that this is x sub two dot minus x one dot like this, and attached to this this velocity we have this element which would be a c element with the value of k sub 3. See? And then we are almost done. The only thing we we have to consider now a um, um, couple of things. In here you have this one that is between this and this other one. So between this and this we find that you have the between this and this you have this spring so in here you will have to say this is a zero here this is a one from here to here and this is like that too and in here, this is going to be that x of 2 dot minus velocity of the wall. Yeah, x of 3 dot, excuse me. Um, this is seen by the spring, the C, with value k sub 1. Yeah. All this in here is going to be a source of flow with velocity equals to zero. And then the other thing that we need left is this one right here. This right here and right here. So this is going to be a zero. Um, this would be also a zero here because it's the difference between this velocity and this. And then you have the R element in there. And then over here is the same thing. Okay, so this is between x of 2 and x of 1. Okay. So this is x of 2 minus x of 1 dot. And then you have right here to put the R element. Okay. And this should be the end of building this bond graph model. So at this point, we can enter it into the CAMG software. Um, the idea is to obtain the state space form. And then we need to get the outputs uh, 
in this case the output is going to be the velocity of m sub 3 and then the force on the spring k sub 2 um, okay so let's let's go to the CAMG software and then we are going to enter this bonegrad model and um, see what we do. Okay, so we have in here we have this ready and I uh, need to look at the plot in here we're gonna um, reduce it to a window so that we can actually see it uh, because we need to transcribe this to the CAMG So let's see how we do. We have the um, link here to the right hand side. We're going to say OK. We're going to say new. And we can start basically anywhere in here. Um, we want to get it as close as possible. So I am going to go all the way to the right over here to make sure that we have enough room. Okay. Yeah, right there. So this E is going to be right here. And then we have the one junction here. And we put this first, and then we are going to have the I element, which would be like this. Really, it doesn't matter in which order you enter it, as long as the arrows are in the correct direction. And then, in here, we could simplify just the uh, a little bit those through power elements on the right hand side and we could write it like that see we uh, did the, the through power uh, elements in here this one here as if it's just one one through power so we have that and then we have to put the one junction which is over here and then I have to put the I element which is over here like this and then we have to go and do the other zero alright and then we have the other one, which would be over here. So this would be like this. From here to here. Now you have another zero in between. Right here. So we're going to put this like this. And then we simplify this is going to be a C element. Yeah. 
this again because of this bomb is through power on this over here. So we're get, it's, it's coming along. We are almost down here. So this would be. Uh, we still need to build the left side of this. So this is going to have a. Is zero over here? And now we're gonna do the one junction. And then we have the one. And then the C element, and then the R element. See, it's beginning to take final shape. So, in here we have the one for the Okay, so in here we have the source of law in here. Uh -huh. And finally in here we have a zero at the top, which is the difference for the other two masses. Okay, and then we have a C element in here. See, right now we have that in, in, in derivative form, would be really hard to, to do. You want to make it a little more aesthetic, so you could just uh, move the single element. From here to here, let's see. Yeah, there's more straight. And then we're gonna go and move the C element from here to here. There you go. So this is our bond drop model. Um, we we can save this screen here or um, just be able to get the, the plot here and so let's just uh, the, get the get the graph for the so that I can put it underneath in here. Can you see an R over there? Huh? Between the bonds eight and seven? Yeah. Am I missing something? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yes, we have an R element that we're missing. So before we do this, um, let's just complete that. Do you see what I mean? I'm missing an R element in here. Hmm. Messed up. And I'm also missing another I element, see? Right now that 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 red 
indicates that I couldn't solve it explicitly, but now it does. So now we have it all finished. So I just want to have a picture of it so that we can put it on the um, on our notes. Right here. So let's just put it on our notes over here. Okay. So what I would like to do is to recognize the the outputs on this bond graph model and then get to the state to the to the state space form real quick. So we have in here, it says, the problem it says the velocity of M3. So what would be in here the velocity of M3? The velocity of M3 is the, is the bond right here on the mass, it would be F sub 6. Velocity of M3, B, B sub 6, which this would be F sub 6. And then these are the outputs. And it also gave us the, there was another one. The force on the spring case of two, which was this one over here to the left, that would be the one right here. Okay, so that is um, on the C element. That would be E14. Force on case of 2, E14. Very good. Having done this and identified the outputs, we simply go back to our bone graph model and we just say interface here to MATLAB and then the two programs will do a handshake. So I'm just waiting for MATLAB to uh, give me the the display so that I can actually run the CAMGSYM, the symbolic file, to be able to obtain the state space form. So in here we, the two programs are having an interface right now, and uh, right here I have. So this is the uh, CAMGSYM form. So if I were to run this directly like this, I will obtain the A and B matrices because we don't need to wait to know what the outputs are. But for the other matrices, I need to wait and define. So the computer program is going to tell us the inputs and the SE1 and SF16. Uh, it has one, two, three, four, five, six differential equations, six state variables. This is my A matrix, yeah, and then you have the B matrix, C matrix and D are not totally defined because we, we, we don't have the definition of the outputs, but I think we're going to do that next. We said that uh, the outputs was uh, F6 and E14. So what we're going to do is we go over here and we say, okay, find F6 and it does. So I prepared my output in here by entering the, on this, say output number one, 
and then you have this is one and this also a one <coughs> yeah so that that is the first the first uh, the first one and then the second one would be 14 14 like this oh I messed up I messed up I need to go on go on do e14 over here need to search it see where it is that uh, takes me to the equations of the system we are building the output equations right now. This is output number two. And then this would be output number two here, and then number two here. And once I have done that, I run this uh, file again. Okay. Where were we, where we here? We need to get out. So we need to run this file here. You just type the name of the file, mgsym. Okay, there we go. And so we got the matrices now, the A, B, the C, and the D matrix. So what we could do is, Mm, yeah, see, so you can see the. See, this would be a little bigger display, but, but anyway, I think it's what it does. It gives us the. It say it tells us what the inputs are. The tells us the state variables. In this order, of course, this is going to be the state variable vector, and then you have the A matrix, the B matrix, the C, and the D matrix. So that's how we obtain the state space form for these two outputs. Um, the matrices A, B, C, and D. Now, of course, if we were to give it numbers to this, um, just for the sake of example in here, we could just put numbers to the physical parameters, set them all to one, and see what happens. Uh, just to get the the form in here, let's just. But I think we are basically have reached our objective. Uh, this is the in reality you you will have to enter the real values now. I'm just initializing them so that we can see what happens when it comes in the numerical form. So in here we can just uh, I think we need to get out of this. Okay. Um, there you go. We have the A matrix B, the C, and the D matrix. And that's how we obtain the state space form. 